and how's everyone doing today? Today we've got another laptop. My buddy Jay so graciously sold me this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous power book for a obscene amount of money. Way too much than any normal collector would pay. Except this one's got a secret that makes it worth every penny that I put into it. So, how's everyone doing today? Today, we're going to show you one of the most powerful pre- Macintosh G3 laptops ever made and that is the PowerBook 3400. Powered with a 603 EV processor it was one of the most powerful laptops that Apple made up until the invention of the G3. Now as you can see it's just a gray slab innovation was pretty much in the toilet by now you know still has a colorful apple logo and that's about the only thing good about it but as you can see it's well optioned it's about four inches about four inches thick here's the secret it has a flex bay and this particular model has the rather elusive Zip 100 in it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any Zip disks at the moment to use on it, but I have a Zip drive. Unfortunately, that means I don't have a CD-ROM drive. So, that will have to be rectified. On the bottom, it's got neat little pop-out feet. Get the push buttons back in to put them down. see the uh, rather simple labeling on the bottom on the back got infrared which actually wasn't used too much on max 10 100 network serial port HDI 30 SCSI and video now you're probably thinking well that's pretty basic for a pretty advanced laptop you're right it is and then you get on this side you have an Apple desktop bus port and then you have two PCMCIA slots. Now these are cool, I don't have any PCMCIA cards but they're motorized eject. These little buttons are the eject buttons. And then you have your regular audio in and out. Nothing on the front. There's a little LED here in the corner lets you know when the battery's charging which my battery is shot which is to be expected on a laptop this old. <clears throat> trackpad, now you notice that this is tiny, but this was a standard trackpad. This is actually almost the same. I think this is the same one the PowerBook 500 series used. Your standard rubber dome spring-ish spring keyboard. And then you have volume and brightness controls. And then you have this absolutely massive 13 and a half inch LCD. And this was actually large for the day. Now, as you'll notice, it says PowerBook 3400C. To my knowledge, they never made one of these in black and white. So the C moniker, as far as I know, is kind of eh, not necessary, but it is full color active matrix. So, and it does have stereo sound, which is actually kind of unusual for these. And of course, the power PC. So, now unlike a lot of laptops of the era, you'll notice that it has this funky little arrow button here. This is the soft power button to power it up. There's another master power button on the back. It's just this tiny little thing right next to the serial port. Now, this is a power PC 603. Uh, they never made a PowerPC 604 laptop. Um, the 604 grew too much power to actually run on batteries. 
uh, similar to the same problem that Apple faced with the G5. Uh, the G5 was much too much of a power hog to uh, put on to a laptop. And you'll see we have a Happy Mac. And uh, this is running OS 8.6. Uh, I thought about putting OS 9 on it, but without a CD drive, it's kind of difficult. So that will probably come in the future. Um, 8.6 is a very, very, very good operating system. Very solid. Uh, probably one of the top five that they ever made. Uh, right around, uh, right along with uh, system uh, 6.0.8, uh, 7.1, uh, 7.6, and 9.2, you know, in terms of classic operating systems, this is probably the best, uh, short of actually running 9.2 on it. Uh, I think I accidentally pulled the uh, power cord out. <laughs> uh, I haven't opened it up yet. Uh, you know, don't really have any reason to at the moment as everything is working perfectly on it. Uh, I bought this in perfectly working condition and uh, it came through without a single scratch on it from you know the pictures that I saw of it so and I got this off my good friend Jay uh, I've actually bought several computers off of him and uh, never never an issue so if he's ever selling something and you want to buy it buy it because it's worth every dime he's asking I guarantee it and he repairs these things for a living. So, as you can tell, it takes a little while for it to start up. It's, you know, it's a low power processor, so it takes a while. But once it gets booted up, I mean, it's screaming fast. It just always, these machines always did take a while to boot. And now we got the finder loading up. And I'm going to cut here and get into a better position so we can show you some more features of the 3400. Okay, so here we are at the finder. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to who, about this computer. Now, if anybody who's watched my videos knows why it says about this computer and not about this Macintosh. So, this was the time of the clone, so it couldn't say Mac. It had to say computer. So, as we see here. It's just a Mac OS computer, doesn't even identify the computer. So, running OS 8.6, and we have 48 megs of memory. <clears throat> and this machine uh, originally came with uh, 16 megs. Uh, this has a 32, or 8 megs, I'm sorry, I believe. No, it was 16. And had a, this one should have a 32 meg add on. So, 48 megs is pretty sufficient for one of these machines. Not the best, but I mean, it, it works. So, uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to Apple System Profiler. And System 8 was uh, the first, or 7, yeah, uh, let me think here. And I think System 8 was uh, the first one that actually had the System Profiler, which is a pretty cool little tool. It tells you everything that you got. So, you'll see here we have a PowerPC 603 EV. All right, it's a, a, a 603E processor, but it's it's a low power processor. So and this one's running at 180 megahertz, which uh, to my knowledge, the fastest 603E processor was uh, 200. So it's not a slouch by a 603 standard. Um, yeah, so you'll see right here, we have 16 megs of memory on board, and then we have a 32 meg expansion card. So. And then this also has a 256K cache uh, for the processor, which is really nice. Let me go down here to network. We have a, uh, we have a built-in Ethernet card. Uh, there's no Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi wasn't even a thought at this time. Uh, the internet was still in its infancy when this machine came out. So uh, this uh, definitely, uh, has no Wi-Fi. Uh, it's only got a 100 meg uh, network card in it. But you'll notice we do have Open Transport and TCP IP installed. So we go over here to devices and volumes.
and you'll see on the expansion bay, the expansion bay is its own bus. And if we open that up, you'll see it has an iOmega Max Zip 100, which is actually made by VST. Uh, these are very, very, I, I've, this is the first time I've ever seen one myself in person. Uh, I, there was uh, CD-ROMs, floppy drives, it came with a CD-ROM. Uh, I believe you could, I think it came with a floppy as well, you could hot, you could swap them out. Um, I was not kind of into it when these were still new, so how these were marketed, I'm, I don't recall exactly. But, and then you'll notice we have an internal ATA bus, which is your IDE, and that has our main hard drive on it. Uh, which is a 1.34 gigabyte uh, IBM Travel Star hard drive. So, uh, which actually still works perfect. And then we can go down here to the display card. And it has a Chips and Technology 65550 video card, uh, which, if I remember correctly, has a uh, 256 megs of memory. Uh, might be, or no, I'm sorry, 512 megs, a K of memory. <laughs> megs. Uh, so it's capable of displaying 800 by 600, which is the resolution of the screen, which is actually a pretty high resolution screen uh, at thousands of colors. Uh, that's the highest it can go. It cannot do millions. Uh, it can do millions on an external display, uh, which strangely, this has a standard VGA output, uh, not a proprietary uh, DB15 like uh, Apple is known for using. This actually has a regular VGA output. So this actually has a very standard uh, video card in it. So I'm going to go over here to the Macintosh hard drive. There's not really much on this. Um, the one thing I do, oops. I'm gonna go down to the, and this actually has the Apple DVD player on it, which leads me to believe it's possible it may have had a DVD ROM drive. Um, I'm going to go to my favorite internet browser of the 90s. Netscape. And yes, you can still use this on the internet. Not for much, but you can still actually go a few places on the internet with uh, Netscape. Here's Google. <laughs> In all of its... Uh, 1990s glory, uh, you know, actually uh, getting something to render in, in an old version of Netscape on most sites is pretty difficult, but it is online. I mean, I can get online. I do have Classzilla installed on here, but it is slow. I mean, it is horribly slow. And that's it's, that's just because it just this machine just does not have the technology that it needs to run properly. One place you can go, which is perfect for this machine, not that I can get there properly. is the Macintosh Garden. And it actually runs at a half decent speed um, considering what you got here. Um, I haven't really played around too much with this thing. I need to uh, <clears throat> I need to uh, download some stuff but uh, yeah, all my all the any download I could possibly want for this machine is here. So the lack of CD-ROM drive is not hurting too much, thanks to the fact that I can get on the internet. So, but uh, it does have a very nice screen. Uh, there's no games on here for me to tr to show you. Um, at least not that I know of. 
but I will go into office. Load up Word here. This is Word 98. This is the last version of Word you can run on this old open operating system. And do a typing test. The keyboard is okay. today. <laughs> I can't type at all today. <laughs> uh, it has a decent keyboard. It's pretty much the same as the, la as the PowerBook 170 uh, in terms of like tactile feel. It's not mechanical. It's just your standard rubber dome, you know, cheap type of keyboard. Uh, yep, we got eeps. So it does have, uh, I mean, it has good full travel keys, you know, that, that feel decent, but, uh, you know, it's, they're, they're laptop keys, you know, uh, the, the addition of the volume. And the uh, brightness controls up here are, are actually wonderful. Uh, you know, otherwise you have to go into control panels and dig around in there and to set things. But uh, you know, it's a good laptop in terms of collectability. Uh, they're not terribly. They're not worth a terrible amount. Um, you know, this this particular one is, is spotless, uh, and the screen is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at that. It, it's it's so vibrant and there's no dead pixels at all. There's no ghosting or anything on this screen. It, it's, it's in immaculate condition for its age. Um, I mean, the, the whole machine, I mean, aside from the battery being dead, which is to be expected, the whole machine is like perfect. Uh, the only thing that's wrong with it is the, the IO port door on the back is missing, which is neither here nor there for me uh, has the original power adapter and everything uh, the feet still work the machine still works perfectly uh, I actually was thinking about getting a battery for it and uh, putting it back into some some use um, these used a uh, nickel metal hydride battery uh, that was actually good for about three hours worth of uh, time so, but this is just a quick overview of the 3400. One of these days here, we're going to go further in depth on this machine. But just to show you the difference in size, this is my uh, almost crushed screen. This is my MacBook unibody laptop. And this is an 11-year-old laptop. And you can see how much bigger the 3400 is in size. And the sad thing is, is this machine here is a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, which, yes, it's scratched up. This was another Jay Bry machine, by the way, uh, which he sold to me for a very, very good price. And I'll tell you what, this is an awesome machine. If you ever come across one of these and a 2.4 gigahertz, I'm telling you, snap that sucker up. I run Mojave on this thing, four gigs of memory, a 256 gig SSD, and I'm telling you, it flies, man. I mean, it is just so buttery smooth. Uh, I, I am so impressed with this machine. My two gigahertz model uh, choked with high Sierra, and this thing here is just super smooth. Um, no, I do not cover Intel Max on my, I do not have any interest in covering Intel Max on my channel, so don't ask me to do a video on it. I might, but I doubt it. If I do any videos on it, it's going to be software related. 
But uh, this 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 machine here is yeah. I mean, it's in like perfect condition. Uh, there's a there's a port right here for a mo for uh, this is uh, for the CD-ROM. Uh, they uh, did offer a modem with this, I believe. Uh, it goes on the opposite side. Eventually, I'm going to do some more videos with this machine here. I'm going to load her up with some software, and we're going to do some software. Uh, we're going to do some software videos here, and uh, I, I might upgrade the OS and uh, maybe see about getting some more memory for it. So, questions and comments are always answered. Send me a send me a comment down below if you like this video, like it, dislike it. If you don't like it, tell me what I'm doing wrong. So, I'm always trying new things. Uh, I'm still using my phone as a camera, so until I get a regular camera, it's probably still going to be a little shaky. So, until next time.